Yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and change this because the next things I'm going to talk about, you don't need it, but they'd be nice to have, you know what I mean? So. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jasmine, if you didn't know, and today I'm sharing part two of a three-part series of things you do and do not need for grad school. So for part two, we're kind of in the middle. These are things that are nice to have, but by no means are they super essential, and I'm not going to say you don't need them because you could use them while you're in grad school. So number one is an iPad or a general tablet. So I would say that I used my iPad a few times throughout grad school. One, I used it for my thesis when I was going through my app-based therapy. And two, I used it to show YouTube videos to my kids or maybe I had like a PowerPoint presentation type of activity. So it was nice to have something that was a lot more compact and it still had the app-based therapy that I needed or anything that I needed to connect to. Um, instead of having my entire computer. So that was really convenient, but can you use your entire computer? Yes, absolutely. Number two, a teacher's pay teacher's account. This is specific to teachers and speech pathologists because that's what teacher's pay teachers is, obviously. However, it is super, super helpful. There are so many free activities on there that you can be benefiting from. There's a lot of non-prep things that you can go on there and use right before your session. And so a lot of people think you have to have teachers pay teachers and pay for the top things, but they have so many free cool activities on there. And that's something that I would say it's free if you're doing the free option. So why not get it? I found it very helpful, but I didn't think that it was essential because a lot of the activities I just made myself. Number three, going along with teachers pay teachers, I would say a Pinterest account is also super helpful because they have ideas for all the activities that you need to make or if you're really stuck on how to kind of target something, there's a lot of ideas on there as well as to different activities you can do, yes, but then like the philosophy behind teaching different sounds certain ways or teaching certain concepts in certain ways. Number four and our last thing would be different craft materials. I would say different things like scissors, colored pencils, um, construction paper, all those different crafty things where you can be really hands-on with your client. I wouldn't say it's super essential to have because you can do therapy with no materials at all, to be honest. However, if you are the type of person who likes to be super crafty, you like to be hands-on, you like for the kid or the client to have something to take with them or to practice a certain craft, I would say that it's super helpful to have that because then you can also make visuals if they need it right on the spot rather than like having to prep all those things before and then bringing them into the session. So crafting materials are always super helpful, especially if you're working with the younger patients, they love that type of thing, but you definitely don't need it. So at the end of the day, I can go on and on and on about optional things that you could be using in your speech therapy sessions or in graduate school in general. However, I'm going to leave it up to you guys down in the comments below to add all of the other optional things that you've had in your grad school experience that you think is super helpful. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down there below as well. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more amazing content, and until my next video, peace.